I, I, yeah, I've, I've been interested in health and fitness from a very young age, from, from about 15, inspired by a number of people, sort of friends, family, and, um, and, and Arnold, of course. Uh, Pumping Iron's probably one of the, I think, I think he was probably the, one of the things that I can think back, and that was like a, a moment where I was like, damn, you know, I want to be, <laughs> be on stage, I want to be Mr. Olympia. And, and, and I, yeah, that, that, that was probably a bit of a tipping point for me. And uh, so I went, I, I did do that. I competed for a number of years as a junior and stood on stage and did everything and just got to a, got to a position when I was like just over 21 and you kind of go into the sort of more, you know, the adult class and, and you, you know, I kind of realized early on that, that genetics has, you could train as hard as you want and you can eat well and that, but you know, genetics is, is a big part of it. And um and, and, I, and it was just like, okay, well, I, I'll, I'll kind of leave it there. But I, I continue to train um, for, for for the whole of that, you know, right up until today. You know, I, I'm probably just as serious about it as today as I, as I was back then and um, enjoy, really, really enjoy it. And, and I think throughout my life, I've always done things that would allow me to either be around people in the sort of health and fitness and bodybuilding space, which it was then. Um, whether it's from a business perspective, from a lifestyle perspective, whether it's from a learning perspective. It, and, and, you know, fortunate to be able to start a business when I was in my kind of late 20s and uh, been able to combine that sort of passion and, and a career out of it. So I've been very fortunate. It's, it's, a fantastic, um, it's a fantastic business to be in on a number of levels. I met my wife, you know, my children, are kind of a result for it, you know, where I am, where I'm living, you know, I owe so much to, uh, to what health and fitness has really given me in my, my life. Absolutely. Uh, well, that's, that's an amazing, uh, snapshot of, yeah. uh, of, you know, all the good things that, that really taking charge and being proactive in your, in your health and fitness journey, what it can lead to, it can lead to not only improved physical health, and mental health too, right? Because we know that the, the relationship there between how cognitive function is impacted by physical uh, movement. But then, you know, you meet your wife, just like I met my wife in, in a fitness center uh, <laughs> at, at the counter. I was working the counter and in, in comes this, this cute girl. I had a conversation, got her number and, <laughs> and the rest is history, you know, and, you know, uh, so mine was actually a fitness fitness show, so it was fitness um, show. Yeah, it was okay. kind of similar, you know, it's fitness big big trade show, um, but yeah, you know, similar similar thing really. And she was working for a customer of mine at the time, so you know, uh, <laughs> I was great. recruiting as well. Yes, yeah. you were recru <laughs> yeah, you were recruiting <laughs> recruiting for love. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. So uh, so obviously, yeah, you have a marriage out of it. You have a family from it, um, and then. You know, not to mention, uh, you, you, like you said, you're just as committed now to your, to your health, to your fitness, to your, you know, exercise as you were years ago. It doesn't mean that, you know, you have to get on stage in a, in a, in a, in a thong to prove that. Uh, <laughs> although there's nothing, wrong, there's, nothing, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that, right? But my point being that it doesn't matter what age we are at, you know, and we can be just as serious and just commit as just as committed and just as all that all in mentality at any age, whether we're a teenager inspired by pumping iron, watching Arnold, which by the way, I have the 25th anniversary DVD somewhere <laughs> over in the other room myself, which, you know, back when we used to watch DVDs, right? We, who, <laughs> we don't really <laughs> use DVDs much anymore, but you know, as you're going through the, the day or the week or the month, just trying to sort of, can, you know be aware that you've got to do something here as well and and understand that what that workout's doing and, it, and it's not about yeah yeah you know we all love to have a nice six pack and a, you know be pretty chiseled and all that sort of stuff but that shouldn't be the main goal i've been doing it for 35 years you've been, probably been doing it for a long time and we've we've put in the hours you know because there's no shortcuts as, as everybody knows it, it, it's it's consistent but it's important maybe not to make that the goal uh, and and um you know, the goal should be that you're, you're just going to be a better person. You know, you're probably going to smile at your wife a little bit more and you're going to have better sex and you're going to have a better time with your children. You're going to have more energy to, to do 
sorry if maybe I, I'm not, not sure whether you say those things on your podcast, but no, um, <laughs> we, I, I'll tell you this much. We, yes, we have not probably talked much about sex, but it's a very important part of life. And, and when it comes to being with your spouse, it's, it's a vital part of the relationship. And you're more inclined to do those things when you more, feel more physically capable uh, and feel more, you know, more uh, confident uh, physically, you know, so it's a yeah. huge. And that goes both component. sides, you know, like That's right. you, you, as a couple, you know, if, if you're, if you don't feel good about your body, that, that, you know, that comes out in different things and you suddenly think, well, you're not connected anymore. And it's like, really, you know, everything starts with us. You know, we're, we're the, we're generally the, the cause of the problem, even if we don't think that. And so, you know, if you feel good about yourself, it, it's not necessarily about putting yourself on a pedestal and, and, you know, bowing down to you. It, it's, it's just about, you, 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 and I've heard it in one of your previous podcasts, you know, our, your, your body's uh, uh, been created in a particular way. And you're, you know, you're responsible for that, for that body whilst you're here. And it's like, you know, someone gives you a gift, a, a car or a, you know, a computer or whatever, you know, you're, you're meant to look after that. What you're not meant to do is sort of beat it up and, you know, throw it around and not, not put it in a case or not clean it and not put the oil in it. You know, your, your job's to look after it and, and, and just to make the most out of it. And if, if you look after it, it's going to look after you in all aspects of your life. And, you know, as a business owner, you know, I have, I have a lot of, you know, we've got over a hundred employees and I've got a family and parents, all kinds of stuff. And, and that takes a lot of energy. And for me to sort of, and, and I, you know, I've definitely got a lot of improvement to make, but for me to be a good husband and, and father and son and boss and manager and all those things, I've got to bring my energy with me. And if, if, I've, if I'm tired and worn out and stressed and I'm in a meeting, then that's going to affect the course of so many different relationships in my life. So, so the, the, the fitness side, yes, great, build yourself a six pack, but also think about you know, building the capability to live a full life without being tired and without having to, to duck out and without being able to bring your mental power with you. You know, fitness is, you know, it's so important for so many areas of your life to be successful. Oh, no doubt about it. That's an, that's a, an amazing point. Uh, it's, it's mental fitness, physical fitness, right? Spiritual fitness, uh, relationship fitness, like all these things. It's just, it's, it's a great way to be and it creates discipline in our lives uh, that kind of is transformative uh, or, or, and, and bleeds into all areas of our life. You know, if you can be very disciplined in one area, it has a tendency to kind of have an impact on other areas Absolutely. of your life. So it's awesome. Yeah. I really want to know a little bit more about uh, your, the concept of uh, your business and stuff with, with what you're doing with uh, Escape Fitness equipment it's it's for anybody who's an enthusiast uh when it comes to exercise and working out and 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 the the, the strength tools and all the different stuff that you can buy and have you know at your disposal whether you have a home gym or you go to like a nice training center of some kind uh t tell me a little bit more about you know obviously we're doing this virtually and you have this really cool background that has some of the <laughs> stuff that uh that you guys are responsible for uh, tell me about what kind of sparked this interest and, and helped to grow this uh, amazing business that you have. Yeah, for, for me, it was, um, I'd, uh, when, when we started the company 21 years ago, or well, the idea probably came a little bit longer, but I, I used to train in the traditional bodybuilding way. So it was dumbbells, barbells, pull-up bars, cables, that, that was it. It was way before people called it functional training. That came a long time afterwards. So that was the way I liked to train. And, and you know, uh, really we started the business from trying to create a rubber covered dumbbell and, and, a, and a weight plate because at the time all the places i went to they were all covered in they were all these nice clanky cast iron ones which actually i quite like you know it reminds me of, of going back into the gyms in the old days but it's right. not for, for a lot of modern gyms you know when you drop them they make a lot of noise they damage your floors and and that sort of stuff so we, we originally came up with um a process of covering them and we did that in Poland we were one of the first companies in Europe to do that um, and that's how we started our business and it was and, and I did that because that was the way I like to train um, and and then over over time people realized that you know they went through the cardio phase and then they went through the machine phase and and then the sort of cable phase and then it, it kind of came full circle probably CrossFit I think were quite influential in in sort of promoting that functional training idea 
And, and it's a brilliant way, as you, as you know yourself, it's a fantastic way, a very efficient way of, of working out the body. And, and our company, we, we, we continue to sort of look at all those different functional training tools and, and develop them. But we, with one difference, and, and that, that difference was, uh, and you said it in your opener, it's, it's uh, you know, fitness has got to be fun. Um, and, and because if it's not fun and it's not enjoyable, and, and people have different definitions of fun, but if it's not fun for you personally, um, you're not going to, you're not going to keep, keep going. You're not going to keep it up. And, you know, fun, it, part of fun is, you know, not getting bored, having variety, um, having thing, you know, using training tools that will probably challenge you in a different way or, or just, just being able to give you a different workout than what you, what you do before so that you're motivated to try something a bit different. And so we've always tried, you know, if you look at a lot of our products are quite colorful, we, we choose different materials where, you know, maybe soft materials, like we've got this soft dumbbell for as an example where you have to grip it and um you know when we were developing that we realized how, how important grip strength was you know regardless of whether you're an athlete or whether you're you know my great grandmother um grip, grip strength is extremely important so we kind of got these soft dumbbells where if i'm trying to get my grandma and my mum to use them they're not going to be intimidated by these big black kind of you know in, uh, in sort of like intimidating dumbbells but they've got this nice soft thing it's soft it doesn't damage their sort of leggings and you can drop them on your toes and they don't hurt you but but what i've got my mum doing is i've got her doing you know some really important presses and pulls and maybe she can do some kettlebell swing to style the movement with it but she's not intimidated so what what we try and do as a company or what we what we aim to do when we're developing products is just make them fun enjoyable exciting so that we can kind of keep people coming back and uh, getting the results that they want. God knows we spend enough money on other things in life that have no bearing on our own health, really, our health and wellness. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, so I, I think it's a great investment because you're investing yeah. in, in longevity and in all these things. I mean, if it's the, you know, the difference between living to 80 and those last five, it's like compressed morbidity, right? Am I going to live to 80? or 85, but those last five, six, seven years, I'm really like life kind of stinks and I'm kind of stuck in my chair all the time and I, I don't, everything hurts. Or am I going to live to, you know, 85, 90 years old and be relatively independent and, 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 and really like kind of disease free up until mm -hmm. the, you know, those last, you know, days of my life. And that's what, mm -hmm. that, that's really what you're selling is you're selling people kind of the ticket to a longer, fuller life that's filled with just, I, I think, more experiences and less pain, less disease, uh, and, and more fulfillment and more independence, uh, yeah. which, which I think is a very strong selling point. And I think it's, uh, it, it, you know, particularly like, you know, you mentioned people in their sort of 40s, you know, I'm getting very close to 50. And I, I, I did an interview a few weeks ago, actually, with a lady called Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, who I, I'd recommend checking out, you know, in terms of sort of nutrition and, and muscle building. But, you know, she said, you know, your 40s are a really important period because that, that's, you know, you, it's an opportunity. It, you know, some people think it's too late when they get into their 40s. But what she was saying, like, it's really important to kind of set yourself up for the next sort of 40 or 50 years and making sure that you've got that sort of, you know, that base of muscle that, that you're, you're developing, you know, good quality muscle, eating the right type of food and that. And then, you know, if you can do it, as you've said, it will really set you up as you go through life and get a lot older. And, you know, one of the other things I didn't realize is how, um, you know, your sort of um, your physical fitness level affects your, um, you know, your ability, your, your likelihood of getting things like Alzheimer's as well, you know, like oh, yeah. having, you know, being good physical condition, muscular condition is, uh, you know, is, there's, there's other factors as well, which, which it sort of, you know, sets you up in a, in a good place. You know, for me, I'd like to, just one day or in my sleep, just go and that's it without having, you know, the 10 or 15 years in some sort of nursing home where I can't move around very well. You know, no not... doubt about it, man. <laughs> I want to be found. I know this, this will sound really strange to people. I really, I want to be found like dead on the side of a trail in, in, in like the mountains. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I want to be, I want people to look at me and go, wow, this guy, how did he get here? He hiked, <laughs> he hiked there. That's how he got there. He was in good enough shape to hike to this point on the trail. And then guess what? The big one happened. Uh, the heart beat, beat its last beat. But you know what? 
that was a good 88 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about living, living that full life, you know, being yeah. one of those people that we see outside walking on the, on the sidewalk, you know, those older folks, you know, they're long retired. Maybe there is a husband and a wife together hand in hand or side by side. And they look like life is fun. They, mm -hmm. they, they're smiling, they're tan because they're outside all the time walking and moving. And guess what? It's, if you stop moving, you start dying. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's, I, I've never said anything truer than that in my life. I, I, can, <laughs> I can promise you that. And it's true. Movement is, is so key and vital to our existence. So uh, if you can, you know, go with every day of your life, find something to do for whether it's a walk, a jog, a swim, a bike, a, a body weight workout, a gym workout, whatever it is, just keep moving. And uh, you're going to just, you're just going to, it's, it's life extension and it's a uh, quality of life without question. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I really want to know a little bit more too about your podcast. Uh, I I'd love to get some of our listeners over to your, uh, to your podcast. Tell me a little bit about uh, when it started and the type of guests that you're having and what a lot of the conversations are, are like. Thank you. Yeah, we've been going just over three years. And, and the reason I started it was when I, when I got into business and even sort of health and fitness is, is I didn't really know a lot. I didn't really have any people around me that were, um, I guess, inspirational or even, even kind of had the, that right type of knowledge. And so I made, as you know, when you start a business, you know, you have to really work hard to, to make the right connections and to learn the right information. And, and that takes, you know, it takes a lifetime to do really. But as I, as I got older and as, as my business got developed and I started to be very fortunate that I was connecting with some fantastic people in the world of health and fitness and business that have been very successful that had great knowledge and I'd sit down you know and have a you know lunch or a coffee or whatever with them and I thought well you know it'd be great to share this with people who work for me because you know they can get as inspired as what I am because when yes. I well I used to make such big leaps when I would go out and visit customers and and, and learn about, you know, that's where we developed all our products because we used to talk to people. So, so that was the original idea. And I thought, well, why don't I just kind of, you know, stick a camera on um, and just record the conversations. And that, that's how we started. I just used a lot of the people that are, are, are customers of ours and, 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 and just sort of, you know, told their story about business, mindset, uh, fitness, nutrition, the whole thing. And, and, and that's really the goal. And so as, as I've been going through my journey, um, as you do, you, you, you know, you learn something. And then when you get to that level, it's like, Oh, I've got another question. I've, I've done that. I've kind of mastered that, but I want the next level. So, so if you kind of follow it, you, you sort of, you know, you, you kind of learn with me. I'm, I'm not a guru. I'm not, I don't, I'm not one of these people that are, are preaching and telling you what to do. But what I, what I do do is I'm a, I'm a constant learner. And so what I like to do with our podcast is you, you can come along with my journey as I'm, exploring and finding better ways to live my life and, and, and business. And, and that's really when the questions are very much about that. So, you know, I'll give you an example. There's a guy in San Diego, a guy called Michelle Delcor, fantastic guy. I recommend you check him out. Um, you may have heard of him. He invented a product called the Viper. And uh, so we, you know, we, we, I've, I've worked with him for, for many years. We sell his products for him. And, um, and we had a good conversation a few weeks ago about, um, about recovery because I, and, and I think, you know, with, with the sort of whole CrossFit movement, it's very, you know, the, 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 the kind of attitude is that you just work hard and you, you work until you can't work anymore. And if, if you don't, if you're not working out hard, you're, you're a puss, you're a whatever, sorry for yeah, my language, no, but, it's okay. <laughs> you can bleep that but you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's that kind of mentality. And, and really he was giving me some examples of people in you know, very, very high level athletes in NFL and in tennis and a number of sports. And if you look at some of the athletes nowadays, um, what they're doing is they're extending their careers quite yes. significantly. So particularly, you know, if you look at what you guys call football, we, we, um, American football, we call it, but um, you know, some, it, it's a relatively short space of career. I think that someone told me they NFL stands for not for long. And, and yet there, there's, you know, there's a few examples of people that are going way past what they should do. Now, why is that? Is that because they're just killing it in the gym every day? Well, 
maybe not. If, if, if you look at what a lot of these people that have been able to prolong their career, what they're doing is they're, they're doing a great job at recovery. And I think recovery is a really big thing. You know, for me, I didn't, I, I just didn't do any recovery. I didn't do, I didn't used to do foam rolling. I, I, I just, it was all about work, work, work. And that recovery was something you did if, if you weren't fit enough.